Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about two force members. So, what is a two force member? Uh, a two force member is a body that has forces, uh, there's no moments here, uh, it's going to be exerted at only two points on the body. Um, so, <clears throat> an example of what is and is not a two force member, I can look over here at this frame. Uh, so, here I've got frame ABC. Uh, and I've got the top member AB and the bottom member BC. Uh, so member AB is connected at A, it's connected at B. So I'm going to have forces uh, that are the reaction forces uh, at both of those points. Uh, so that I've got two connection points, two places forces are exerted, and this is going to be a two force member. Uh, BC, on the other hand, I've got reaction forces at B, reaction forces at C and a separate force right here in the middle, uh, so there's three points at which forces are exerted. Uh, so since I've got more than two, this bottom piece is not a two-force member. And that takes away some of the assumptions we can make. Um, so these types of forces, it uh, doesn't matter what kind of forces they are, they can be reaction forces, they can be directly applied forces. Uh, if I've got more than two points where those forces are applied, I don't have a two-force member. If there's only two, then I do have a two-force member. So <clears throat> the two-force member is important because I'm going to have two equal, opposite, and collinear forces acting on it. Uh, I can make some assumptions about those forces at those two points. Um, so we need to remember that the structure is in equilibrium, which means that each member is in equilibrium. If it's a two-force member, that means I need to have two equal, opposite, and collinear forces. Uh, so this is my, my setup down here. Uh, the only two options I can have are I can have these two forces in compression uh, pushing together on the member, or I can have those two forces pulling the member apart. I can have it in tension. So <clears throat> the member um, is exerted. Or sorry, the forces are exerted at only two points, and there's no moments uh, here. So why do these forces need to be equal, opposite, and collinear? Um, because basically that they're, they are in equilibrium. So the two forces, the sum of the forces at those uh, two points has to be equal to zero. Uh, because the, the body needs to be in equilibrium, so the sum of the forces need to be zero. The only way to do that with two forces is to have them be equal and opposite. The forces need to be collinear to make the sum of the moments equal to zero. So here on the top, I've got an example of two forces that are equal and opposite, but not collinear. Uh, in that case, these two forces are going to act as a couple. Uh, if they're acting as a couple, they're going to cause a moment. Since there's no other forces, no other moments to counteract that, uh, that means that the sum of the moments is not going to be equal to zero. The only way it can prevent a moment from occurring is by having that distance d be equal to zero. Uh, and so I can only have two forces pressing together or two forces pulling apart like that. Uh, and those are my only options that I can have for the body to be in equilibrium. So this line of action, um, the line along which these forces are going to act, uh, will always act along the connecting uh, point between the two joints. So if I've got joint one over here, joint two over here, that line connecting those two points, that's going to be my line of action for both the forces. Uh, it doesn't matter the size, the shape of the member. Um, I could have kind of a big square beam like this. Uh, it's always going to be along that line connecting the two joints. Or I can have a curved beam like this. Uh, and this curved beam messes up a lot of people, but you need to remember that line of action. The only two points that matter are those joints, those two connecting points. So why are two force members important? Um, the method of joints and the method of sections, if we're analyzing trusses, we're going to assume that we have two force members. If I don't have that uh, assumption, then the method of joints and method of sections don't work. Uh, it lets us take shortcuts in analysis. The method used to analyze frames and machines uh, does not, not rely on this assumption, so that's why with frames and machines where we don't have all two force members, we can use that method. Uh, but this method is a lot more time consuming than the method of joints or method of sections. Uh, so we only use it when we really can't make that two force number assumption. Uh, finally, overall, 
uh, when we're doing any of these methods, uh, by identifying a two-force number, I'm reducing the number of unknowns. Uh, I no longer have to worry about separate reactions on either side. There's basically one value that's going to tell me uh, you know, so many pounds of tension, so many pounds of compression. Uh, and if I make that assumption, I cut down my unknowns, I make my analysis easier. Uh, so with that, that's all I have for the video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.